dust swirls around your ankles, the clash of steel echoes in your ears, and before you stands a creature of legend, a giant. In the Bible, these towering figures weren't just bedtime stories, they were real threats, obstacles that tested the faith and courage of God's chosen people. From the monstrous Nephilim to the brutish King Og, these giants cast long shadows of fear. But who were the most dangerous? Three contenders rise above the rest, Goliath, the Philistine champion, Og, the king of Bashan, and the enigmatic Nephilim. Each possessed a unique brand of menace. Goliath, a physical marvel clad in iron, dominated the battlefield with brute force. Og, a ruthless king, ruled from a land littered with the remnants of giants, hinting at a bygone era of monstrous power. The Nephilim, shrouded in mystery, were said to be the offspring of divine beings and humans, blurring the lines between the earthly and the divine. Today, we delve into the legend of Goliath, the giant whose name has become synonymous with monstrous size and arrogance. But Goliath was more than just a big guy. Let's peel back the layers of his legend and discover the true source of his danger. Goliath, a mountain of a man. The book of Samuel paints a vivid picture of Goliath. He wasn't just tall, he was colossal. Standing at an estimated six cubits, around nine feet, he towered over the Israelite soldiers. Imagine the fear that must have gripped them as they looked up at this walking fortress. But Goliath's physical stature was only part of the equation. He was clad in heavy bronze armor, from his gleaming helmet down to his greaves. This wasn't just any armor, it was crafted by skilled smiths and designed to turn aside sword blows and deflect arrows. In his hand, he wielded a spear with a shaft as thick as a weaver's beam and an iron head that could cleave a man in two. Goliath wasn't just big, he was a walking arsenal. Where did Goliath come from? The Bible doesn't delve deeply into Goliath's origins. We know he was a Philistine, one of the Israelites sworn enemies. The Philistines were a powerful people known for their advanced weaponry and fierce warriors. But Goliath was something more. He was their champion, a symbol of their might and a weapon of terror. Some scholars speculate that Goliath may have suffered from a condition known as acromegaly, which causes abnormal bone growth. This could explain his immense size and the mention of his bronze helmet, which might have been custom made to accommodate his oversized head. However, the Bible remains silent on this point, leaving Goliath's origins shrouded in a veil of mystery. What made Goliath so dangerous? Goliath's power wasn't t solely rooted in his physical stature. He was a skilled warrior, a veteran of countless battles. His confidence in his abilities bordered on arrogance. He taunted the Israelite army daily, issuing a challenge that no one dared to accept. This arrogance, fueled by his immense size and martial prowess, made him a truly formidable foe. But perhaps the most significant source of Goliath's power was the fear he instilled in the Israelites. They saw him as an unconquerable giant, a living embodiment of their own anxieties. This fear threatened to paralyze them, to make them surrender before they even drew their swords. It was this psychological warfare, as much as his physical prowess, that made Goliath such a dangerous threat. The day the giant fell, how David conquered Goliath. The story of David and Goliath is one of the most iconic underdog victories in history. A young shepherd boy, armed with nothing more than a sling and a few stones, faced down the seemingly invincible giant. But David's victory wasn't just about luck or a well-placed throw. It was a triumph of faith, courage, and a touch of ingenuity. David, unlike the seasoned warriors, saw Goliath not as an invincible giant, but as a flawed opponent. He recognized that Goliath's arrogance blinded him to his own vulnerabilities. With unwavering faith in God and a slingshot honed by years of practice tending his sheep, David stepped forward to meet the challenge. The details of the battle are well known. David's stone found its mark, felling the giant with a single blow. But the true significance of this victory lies in the message it conveys. Even the most formidable giants have weaknesses. Faith, courage, and a clear head can overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. This is where our exploration of Goliath pauses. We've delved into his physical stature, his origins, the source of Og, oh, the last of the refined. While Goliath dominated the battlefield with brute force, King Og of Bashan ruled his land with an iron fist and the lingering shadow of a bygone era. Unlike Goliath, whose origins remain shrouded in relative obscurity, Og's story is steeped in the legend of the Rephaim, a race of giants mentioned throughout the Bible. A legacy of giants, the Rephaim and Og's lineage. The Rephaim were a formidable people. Described as giants or men of great stature, Deuteronomy 3.11, they instilled fear in the hearts of even the most courageous warriors. The Bible offers glimpses of these giants in scattered passages. In Genesis, 
the Rephaim are mentioned as inhabiting the land of Canaan before the Israelites arrived. Numbers 13.32 describes them as men of great stature who made the Israelite spies feel like grasshoppers in comparison. Og, king of Bashan, was said to be the last of the Rephaim. Deuteronomy tells us his bedstead was made of iron and measured an astounding 9 cubits long and 4 cubits wide, roughly 13.5 feet by 6 feet. This suggests Og himself was a giant of immense size, a living testament to the fearsome Rephaim who once ruled the land. Og wasn't just a giant, he was a powerful and ruthless king. His kingdom of Bashan was known for its fertile land and fortified cities. Og's immense size likely translated into physical prowess, making him a formidable warrior in his own right. However, his true power stemmed from his position as king and the fear his giant stature inspired. The Bible paints a picture of Og as a tyrant who oppressed his subjects. Numbers 21 33-35 describes the battle with Og, where the Israelites utterly destroyed him and his people. This decisive victory not only secured the rich lands of Bashan for the Israelites but also marked the symbolic end of the Rephaim. How the Israelites defeated Og Unlike Goliath, who was felled by a single stone, the details surrounding Og's defeat are sparse. The Book of Numbers tells us God delivered Og and his people into the hands of the Israelites. This suggests a larger battle, where the Israelite army, emboldened by their faith in God's promise, overcame the fearsome king and his forces. Og's immense size, once a symbol of power and dominance, became his undoing. His cumbersome movements and reliance on brute force may have made him vulnerable to the Israelites' more agile tactics. Perhaps the sheer number of Israelite warriors overwhelmed him, or maybe a well-placed strike exploited a weakness in his armor. The exact details remain a mystery, but the outcome is clear. Og, the last of the refined giants, fell from his throne, his reign of terror brought to an abrupt end. Just as David's victory over Goliath showed that faith and courage could overcome seemingly insurmountable odds, the Israelites' defeat of Og carries a powerful message. Even the most terrifying giants, even those with a legacy of immense power, can be brought low. The Enigma of the Nephilim, Giants Shrouded in Mystery Goliath, a champion clad in iron, dominated the battlefield. Og, the last of the Rephaim, ruled with the lingering shadow of a bygone era of giants. But the Nephilim, shrouded in mystery and whispered about in hushed tones, represent a different kind of danger entirely. The Birth of Legends, Unveiling the Nephilim The Nephilim are first mentioned in Genesis 6-4. The passage is cryptic, referring to them as the offspring of the sons of God and the daughters of man. The exact nature of the sons of God is debated. Some interpret them as angels, while others believe they were a line of godly men descended from Seth, Adam and Eve's son. Regardless, the union between these divine beings and human women resulted in the Nephilim. The Hebrew word Nephilim can be translated as giants or fallen ones. This ambiguity adds to the mystery surrounding them. Were they simply a race of exceptionally tall and powerful humans, or did their lineage imbue them with a more sinister quality? The Bible offers few details about the Nephilim. However, their story has captured imaginations for millennia. The Book of Enoch, an ancient Jewish religious text not included in the Christian canon, expands on the Nephilim narrative. It portrays them as monstrous giants who corrupted humanity and taught them violence and sin. Other cultures and mythologies have adopted and adapted the Nephilim legend. Some see them as a race of fallen angels, forever barred from returning to heaven. Others depict them as powerful demigods who fathered monstrous offspring. The lack of concrete information in the Bible has fueled speculation and artistic interpretations, making the Nephilim a persistent figure in religious lore. The threat posed by the Nephilim while the Bible doesn't explicitly state the cause of the Great Flood, some interpretations link it to the rise of the Nephilim. Their violence and disregard for humanity may have been a factor in God's decision to cleanse the earth. Even if not directly responsible for the Flood, the Nephilim represent a world on the brink of moral collapse. Their existence, a product of the blurring of lines between divine and human, symbolizes the dangers of unchecked violence and corruption. The stories of Goliath, Og, and the Nephilim, though separated by chapters in the Bible, offer a cohesive message. They serve as cautionary tales, reminding us of the dangers of arrogance, unchecked power, and straying from the path of righteousness. For Christians, these giants represent the challenges to faith that can arise. Just as the Israelites face down physical giants, Christians today face spiritual giants, temptations, doubts, and forces that threaten to erode their faith. The victories over Goliath and Og, and the cautionary tale of the Nephilim, serve as a call to unwavering faith in God and the courage to confront these challenges. So, the next time you face a giant in your own life, remember the stories from the Bible.
whether it's a personal struggle, a societal ill, or a threat to your faith, approach it with the same unwavering trust in God and unwavering moral compass that guided the Israelites to victory.